Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it we're looking at the third online quiz for Chapter 12, which is about chi-squared. The first question in this quiz is, what is the null hypothesis for the chi-squared goodness of fit test? Uh, the choices are A, the distribution of frequencies will be uniform across all categories, B, uh, the distribution of frequencies will match a hypothesized pattern of expected scores or frequencies, C, the distribution of frequencies will be zero for all categories, or D, the distribution of frequencies will be the same for people in each predictor group. Well, the one that we're marking correct in this case is B. Uh, the distribution of frequencies will match a hypothesized pattern of expected scores or frequencies. Now, I should mention that A could be correct, but that's only if the particular pattern that you expect is uniform. B is the more general answer, and so B is the one that we're marking correct, um, because it talks about the hypothesized pattern of expected scores or frequencies. Um, and again, here are the, uh, the two uh, hypotheses copied directly from the presentation. And you can say, uh, these are the two versions of the alternative hypothesis, and they're either not equally distributed or they're not proportionally distributed, and that's the one that we're emphasizing right here. Number two, in calculating the chi-squared tests, the uh, observed frequencies in each category are compared to A, uniform frequencies, standardized frequencies, expected frequencies, or the population mean. The answer is expected frequencies. That's the basis that we use. Um, in other tests, we use things like the population mean, but in this one, we use the expected frequencies. Here's the actual formula. We got the chi-squared on the left, and we are summing up. Um, we're looking at O is the observed frequencies in each of the categories, and E is the expected frequencies. And again, they're calculated differently depending on whether you're using a single, a single variable goodness of fit test or a two variable uh, test for independence. But once you get the expected frequencies for either one, the, the formula for chi-square is just the same. And so you're using the observed and you're comparing the expected where the expected serve as the baseline the same way that the population mean serve as the baseline in many other quizzes. Uh, which of the following situations is appropriate for using a chi-squared test? This is number three. A, to examine the relationship between major and graduation status at UVU. B, to compare average heights of males and females. C, to compare mean UVU sample IQ scores with the known population mean IQ score. Or D, to examine the relationship between height and weight. Well, in this case, the answer is A, to examine the relationship between major and graduation status at UVU. The reason that's the correct answer is because those are two categorical variables. Your major is a different category, and your graduation status, meaning graduated, not graduated, is a category. B, where you're comparing the height, which is a quantitative variable for men and women, you would use the two sample t-test there. Uh, to compare the UVU IQ scores to a known population mean, that would be a one sample t-test or z-test. And then D, to examine the relationship between height and weight, you would usually use correlation or regression to do that. But for A, you know, again, these are not the same variables, but it's the same idea because this is the example I had of uh, athletic scholarships where I have one categorical variable for gender, the same way I have here in my graduation example, and the other categorical variable is for sport. And again, same concept, and this is where I want to use the chi-squared test, specifically the test for independence. Number four, excuse me, yeah, number four. In a study that looks at the relationship between gender and college major, a statistically significant chi-squared goodness of fit test would mean A, only that the distribution of college major varied by gender, B, that the distribution of college major varied by gender and the distribution of genders varied by college major, C, only that the distribution of genders varied by college major, or D, that post hoc t-tests are needed to untangle the patterns. Well, again, long and wordy, the correct answer is B, you know, which sort of confirms a lot of times that uh, when in doubt, the long answer tends to be the correct one. Uh, the reason it's this, and A and B say it's only this one variable, not the other one. It's at this point that I notice I have a typo in here. The question should actually say the chi-squared test for independence, not the goodness of fit, because we have two categorical variables. I'll fix that for the future. Um, but the test for independence simply says that the one varies by the other, and it's sort of agnostic about which one comes first. A and C are very are directional, and that's that's not it, meaning that 
it's only this one that uh, varies. Uh, D, the post-hoc t-tests are usually used when you do the analysis of variance. Um, again, here's the same example where we're looking at uh, gender and we're looking at sports and two categorical variables, and this is where we would use, um, if we had a statistically significant finding we don't here, we would see uh, more substantial differences between sports. You know, I can guarantee you if we had, uh, if women, uh, if 26 got tennis scholarships, we would have a significant difference. All right, last question. The most common measure of effect size for the chi-squared test for independence is A, A to squared, B, the multiple correlation, C, the square root of chi-squared, or D, the phi coefficient. And the answer here is the phi coefficient. A to squared is the effect size for the analysis of variance. Uh, multiple correlation uh, is, is a step in the way towards R squared, which is used in regression. Square root of chi-squared you know, doesn't mean anything that I'm aware of, the phi coefficient. And here's its formula. The nice thing is, if you've calculated chi-square already, you just divide by the sample size and take the square root, and you've got phi. Phi is a version of the correlation coefficient, and it's interpreted the same way. Um, anyhow, that's it for the third quiz, and I'll see you in a moment for the fourth.